batter, overwelding, and wrong gas selection could be draining your profits. Welcome to Weld, where each week we explore different pathways available in the welding industry. I'm your host, Bo Wigington, and this week we're heading back to Fabtech to visit the air gas booth where I chat with Bill Farmer and Brian Thomas about unlocking the hidden cost of welding, a program that helps shops spot leaks in their workflow. Ready to optimize your shop? We dive in right now. So do you guys want to introduce yourself to the audience just in case they're not familiar with what you do here at Air Gas? National Senior Director of Advanced Fabrication. I'm Bill Farmer. Bill Farmer? Yeah. Brian Thomas, I'm the National Director of Package Gas Services for Air Gas. And I'm Bo Wigington. I don't work for Air Gas, but we are here today. Everybody knows Bo. <laughs> Everybody knows Bo. We're talking about the hidden cost of welding. Because you all have a program where you'll go in and actually see how a shop is operating. So can you kind of give me a rundown of what that program is? Always the biggest driver in cost of welding per foot, what we talk about, is labor. 85 at least percent of your cost of weld per foot is labor. What you buy in consumables, wire, gas, less than 10% most of the time. Okay, so we're unlocking this process. What's the first step? First thing we do is come in and measure everything. Wire feed speeds, amperage voltage, travel speeds, gas flows, what gas you're using, how many hours, how many people are burning up these consumables in this process. When you go into shops, like what are some of the most common mistakes that you see people making that they have to like waste a bunch of time redoing? So for us, the measurement, the ratio, the KPI of of rework is operator factor, right? That's the amount of arc on time over the amount of total time. How much time? Eight hours in the shop. You know, I welded this much. I was under the hood. A spatter is rework, and that does nothing but eat up that labor piece, right? I mean, the very first thing we blame it on is bad gas. And they always go to the gas. It's never got to go to the gas. It's an easy one to blame, I promise you it's not bad. But anyway... (laughs) Typically, it's loose connections. It's resistance in your electrical system. We can see that in a wire-to-contact tip ratio. If you're using an inordinate amount of contact tip, spinning it, you're probably getting some spatter, right? Yeah. If you've got a bad gas-to-wire ratio, there's probably a chance that probably you, you might not be using the right gas mix. We may have contaminated a gas mix. That's going to create spatter. So those KPIs indicate things that, that, that impact your operator factor or that 85% of the pie. If you find this operator error, you know, like you're going to these shops, you're finding all this operator error, what do you do? Like, what's the next step? We, we go in from a position of teaching, coaching, helping, assisting, and really making sure what we're trying to show is of value to them. It does us no good to pick one specific metric. They really don't care about it. Yeah. Right? So we want to understand their needs and their demands and how we can make an impact. What are the most, like, biggest mistakes you see in shops? They're just running 75, 25 for everything, right? This goes back to the tribal knowledge. I've used that gas my entire career. I've always done that. No matter if they've changed process or material, they've always stuck with what's worked. At the end of the day, we want them to weld cleaner, faster, and more efficiently. Yeah. If we can achieve all those three things through a change in the gas, uh, adjustment on the machine, not in how they weld, just how it's set up, you can get a lot of uh, efficiencies created. Some people, they just blast it, right? Like, And that can do things to your welds. You know, it can affect a lot of different things, but it's also, you're losing a lot of money. Like, sure. But it's kind of counterproductive if your business is to sell people more gas, you know, to point out those mistakes, you know. <laughs> no, I, I, I'm proud of air gas, right? What's good for the industry is good for air gas. You know, we've got guys losing money over welding. Maybe the jobs are going somewhere else or overseas or to another one of their competitors. Our job is to help our customers compete. If they compete, we do better. Well, it's, it's why we focus on packaged gas technologies, like with our Arcal product, right? We want to create efficiencies that tie into our unlocking program, but we want to help them compete. And we can take some of the guesswork out. We can take the maintenance and regulators out, the operational inefficiencies out of the standard cylinder that you have to do changeouts for. Uh, and 
<laughs> hunt down, make sure you have the right blend tolerance in every mix. Because unfortunately, not all fill facilities are created equally. Okay. Right? You think you could be welding with 75 25, it could be closer to 60 40. Dang. Oh, and, and what's crucial to that, you've got to go keep going back to the fact that you're looking at your cost of oil per foot. That gas or those wires, very small piece of your cost of welding per foot, right? It's your labor that's costing you 85 to 90 percent of, yep. of what you're putting down per foot. If we can impact that, we're way better off. How do you soften the blow to the welders when you're in the shops? Like change is tough, period, in the shop, right? So, like I said, if you just tell welders to do something and they've been doing something for 30 years, they're not going to change. Yeah. Right. So you have to show them. You have to show. Them. If somebody wants to do this program, right? If sure. they want to find out, like, what what's going wrong? Where can I save money? How can I be more efficient? What is the process like? As you said, you come in, you get a baseline, and then what happens? Well, at the very beginning, we get everybody on the same page, nodding with a couple of hours worth of... <laughs> I like yeah. that. Gotta we're, get we're, everybody We're nodding. all on the same page, right? This is what we're... We're not here to teach you how to weld. A, a 3 sixteenths weld is what we're asking these guys to make here. If it's overwelded by a sixteenth of an inch, you've overwelded that by 78%. 78% too much labor, 78% too much wire, too much everything, too much gas, too much everything. So that's, a, that's only a sixteenth of an inch. So if you get that right, there's a ton of save. Now, I'm not saying every weld you can make could be exactly 3 sixteenths of an inch, yeah. but we see welds that are specified as three sixteenths of an inch and then a five sixteenths of weld. So we got everybody nodding heads. Mm -hmm. We yeah. figured out where we're losing a bunch of money. Right. How long does that process take? If I wouldn't said, oh, you're overwhelming everything by a sixteenth of an inch. I just saved you a million dollars. See you later. It's been nice to know you. That's not helping those guys. What percentage can we get by? Maybe 20% of those welds are overwhelming. Let's take a look at those. Why, why are they overwhelming? Right? So that's that's the process. Okay, we get the 20, let's go look at the other ones, right? So it's a continuous improvement. It's hard to change people's mind who are stuck in their ways. Yeah, I mean, you can go in and you can turn, everybody's wire feed speeds up. They're welding real fast and they're all going like this to the boss and they're getting nice root penetration. But you leave, maybe they turn it back down. Everybody's gotta be comfortable with, with, with the change. And then how do you track that? Like, how do you set up like shops to track that? Digital welding efficiency analysis is a great way to track it. If, if, if we don't have the digital welding efficiency analysis, we do this manually also. All those calculations, all these guys get trained for 16 weeks out of a year to be able to do those calculations. Gas the wire, contact tip the wire, operator factor, melt off rates, all those KPIs that we set up are, are manual. Pro it's not terrible math, yeah. but you just gotta know what you're looking for. So the gas part of this. So we were talking about you get blamed, right? Like All you're... the time, especially from Bill. Constantly blames me. Constantly. Okay. So like from the gas side, like what about Arcal and like air gas, your stuff? Like what do you guys do to try to and like make sure people are getting what they get, you know? Well, we do a, f a few things. And Arcal is unique, right? It's our premium shield and gas. Uh, low moisture lowest far below any AWS standard right now. So like our straight argon product is less than five part per million moisture, a max in every bottle, right? Moisture is the well killer with porosity issues and metal cracking. We also have a tighter blend tolerance. So we're 0.9% absolute on all our blends compared to the standard of 1.9. So we take a great deal in the preparation of the cylinder, the fill process and the purity of the gas we put in there. All of them are a higher purity and they all far exceed A5.32. Right. But that's just one piece. Right. The valve technology is where all the labor is coming in to play, right? So let me ask you a question. Okay. When's the last time you changed a bottle of, of gas out? Uh, last week. Last week. Yes. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say in your shop, it's not a huge manufacturing facility. Maybe it is. Uh, Maybe this is a side hustle. <laughs> yeah, this is definitely a side hustle, you know. But where do you store all your fulls? Uh, they're in my shop. Yeah, so how long does it take you to stop what you're doing and go swap out a bottle and get back? Uh, I'd say um, maybe about 15 minutes. Like, so you're total. about, that's about industry average, right? 
So that okay, includes that's good to know. That, that includues rolling the cylinder. Be than that. Yeah, I know. To be average. Yeah. I'm lazy, bro. But <laughs> if you want to be average, I got something. I'm all to about tell being you, average, bro. man. It's all about averages in the games. But now think about if we take some of the more time-consuming things out of the equation. And we always joke, you know, just finding the crescent wrench to take off. The, yes, that the is what it is. That's what takes me that's the longest. <laughs> that's the 15 minutes. I can get it off and on really fast. It's finding the tools to do it. Yeah. Our Viper, which is a valve integrated pressure regulator, is a two stage regulator that's all integrated into the cylinder. You never have to worry about changing a regulator out. You don't have to worry about finding a crescent wrench. You don't even have to worry about screwing the connection to your machine on because it comes with a integrated quick connect system you don't have to do anything besides go wheel the bottle over and plug it in so we use all the biggest nuisances i guess you could say in doing a cylinder change out and we try to fix it and it even, adds up and it adds up even to the simple of having a integrated pressure gauge on it so you know what's in the bottle and how much is left i know this sounds silly but the amount of bottles that get sent back that are full they got put in the empty pile when someone was looking for something. Yeah. It's constant. We don't get to reuse that gas. We've got to bleed that bottle down and refill it so it's gone. And as a business owner, how many how many can you get away with yeah. uh, sending <laughs> back full and being like, I'm out of gas. I need to make another reorder. It's costly. And it adds up, right? And it's time and effort calling. So all these little efficiencies add up and it makes it a much more efficient gas to use, not just on the security and the welding side, but the operational side. Well, and think about too, how regulators get used in our shops, right? When you're swapping in between, maybe you're going from a flow meter to a regulator. Do they get gently placed very nicely? No. no <laughs> they get tossed to the side and we've seen it many times and you've probably hurt the, cali uh, the calibration on that regulator just by that simple dropping it off the table, setting it down abruptly. It shifts. Now, when you go to weld, maybe you've got too much flow. Yeah. Well, what did I do? I threw that off. Ours are protected. They never leave the bottom, right? You don't have to worry about that. The best part is it's the life. Right? What's a standard warranty on the regulators you got? I have no idea. You can get three-year warranty on a regulator. Just ours alone, minimum 10. Dang. And that's on us. You don't ever have to worry about the warranty. You just bring it in. Yeah. Just it goes with the cylinder back and forth. That's I, awesome. I like the, the the quality of the gas integrity that it that provides too. There's no reverse, no way to contaminate that cylinder after it's been filled. Another piece to the bottle, and this is probably uh, the biggest thing from a saving standpoint when it comes to the gas, is you're going to get more out of every bottle, right? When you start to dwindle and get to the bottom of your bottle, blow gets inconsistent. Sometimes you're mixed. You're making more adjustments. How many times are you going to do that before you swap a bottle out? We're able to get consistent flow and blend tolerance all the way down almost to the bottom with the technology we have built into it. So instead of swapping a bottle at 400, 600 PSI, you're going to get down to 80 at continual flow and the right mix every time. The cool thing about Arcal is you have different, different mixes, you know, that are good for different things. And like, I know people that are getting into welding or even like people that have welding shops, they might not know what those different blends are good for. Can you can you give us a rundown of the Arcal line? So here's something we haven't really talked about yet. And we have five reference line gases. Okay. Uh, they handle about 85% of all welding processes. But when you look, there's probably you know, what, a hundred different <laughs> welding different, gases? Yeah, there's a lot. Uh, yeah. So because we were able to enhance the purity, reduce the moisture, uh, you know, gain the blend tolerance, we can now shrink everything into those five mixes. So prime straight argon, low moisture content. We're talking about aluminum, mag, and tape, right? That's one of the five. Good old 75, 20. Plus. Yeah, we call it plus. Short circuit, MIG, and flux cord wire, right? We have a speed, a 92 argon HCO2. Really good for maybe up to 3 16th material. You can throw a lot of wire to it. It's called speed for a reason. It goes fast, right? Force, a little more CO2, 82 argon, 18 CO2. A little bit heavier material, a little better sidewall penetration, 
you know, and you can still throw a lot of wire. When I say that, you can get it into a spray. And then we have a chrome, it's a, a 98 argon, 2% CO2. You might need a little help with that. There's an awful lot of 90 helium, two and a half, seven and a half, two and a half mixes out there. They can be replaced in most cases with argon and CO2 or stainless made. And with the right you know, visit from our well process specialist, exactly. we can do that in most Dial of our customers it. right now. Dial their equipment in and switch them off of helium and get them into a predominant argon mix. I know another thing a lot of people talk about right now, you were talking about helium. There's one process that is really good for helium and that is welding uh, DC aluminum. Do you have any do you have any special tricks for that? Hold a really, really tight arc length. <laughs> you just don't do it. Don't do <laughs> it. Yeah, you don't see as much of that anymore. I, yeah. I used to see it when I started. I'm old. I got gray hair and I've been around. But with the square wave technology of AC TIG and a couple of machines that you could really play with the, with the waveform on there, it's not necessary. You can get just as much performance out of out of straight argon or argon helium. You can add some helium in. Straight helium, you don't see a lot. It's hard to find. It's difficult to do, too. If somebody is interested in getting into this program to see like where they are losing money with their business, where do they go? Just go to airgas.com? Airgas.com will get you there. There's a, a phone number there that'll take you to our well process specialist. Or if you have an account manager that visits you regularly, say unlocking the hidden cost of welding and poof, a well process specialist <laughs> should show up. Man. Even any of our right. local branches across exactly. the country, they're all available. They exactly. can all get you in touch with the right people. As far as like Arcal gases, any, any air gas, you can get it. You can get it anywhere in the country. What about like drop shipping? Not quite yet. We haven't figured out how to drone deliver. Yeah, uh, the drones, drones we're working yeah. on. Yeah. That's next year, Fab Deck. <laughs> hey, I'm going to hold you to it. I'm going to hold you to it. If I don't see drones with bottles flying around here, I'm going to be like, they lied to me on live air. <laughs> well, I appreciate you guys for sitting down and inviting us in. Yeah, we got to get you to strike an arc. You got to go through the whole thing, yeah, start to finish. That'd be way cool. We're we'll going to be how. testing your welds here in a few minutes. Hey, that's fine. We might not want to record that, though. No. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Maybe it'll be an audio-only section. Smart. Know. Smart play. <laughs> well, thanks, guys. No, thank you. This is yeah. great. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Weld, and a huge thank you to Airgas, Bill, and Brian for really opening my eyes to where I might be wasting money in my own shop. If you're trying to find the leaks in your shop, reach out to your local air gas or follow the links down in the show notes. Just remember, little things add up over time. So if there's things that are costing you money, it's a good idea to try to figure out what they are. I appreciate everybody that's been learning along with me. And until next time, we'll see you out there.